Anyone who has been watching my content for a while can recognize that I am a huge To Your Eternity fan. I started the series two years ago and a flood poured down on my tiny smushy pillow. This story promises its audience a world that makes one treasure the struggles of one individual so that joy could be celebrated for another. As you watch Fushi grow as a human and develop emotions that everyone has faced in their lives, you can learn a thing or two with him when he grows attached to every person that he meets. It is such a daring and fresh experience in the shonen genre that not a lot of other creators branch out to explore. Every new step in the journey is a unique experience and I am positive that the majority of people who kept up with the series up till the Jananda Island arc can agree with that. However, when it comes to long running series, a lot of people begin to question the longevity and relevance of its storytelling for the future. Story progression is something a lot of writers struggle with. We have seen great stories get horrible receptions near the end. Game of Thrones season 7 and 8 were a disaster. Harry Potter never needed Cursed Child to renew its legacy, and death threats were sent to Isayama over the Attack on Titan ending. The list goes on and on, and fans certainly take note of story elements that the creators branch out to explore but fail to implement them. This results in chaos that stops people from consuming a story that could possibly have an underwhelming conclusion. Or you can be on the other side of the spectrum and make the whole series rely on its past glory. Never bringing proper development to the story is a major problem. It resets characters to their old personality at the beginning of a new chapter that they were supposed to develop from in one way or another. Naruto fans especially had this problem with Boruto. Fairy Tale follows the same formula for its fights that pushed away a huge number of audience. Dragon Ball got pretty messy for the fans during the early 2000s. I think the only show that stayed relevant in this category has been Pokemon. This brings us to discussing the current state of To Your Eternity. I still think To Your Eternity is a great story in itself, but I can't deny that the series feels a whole lot more different now than it how it used to be. My point is that if you have kept up with the recent chapters, then you would notice that the story has become quite prevalent with fights. And that's not to say that the series never had fights to begin with. Right after the first major arc with March, Perona and Hayase, the story introduced Knockers as the opposing force for Fushi that future characters had to deal with alongside him. I for one absolutely adore most of these fights. The end of an era had a lot of fantastic sequences and it is easily my favorite fight of the series thus far. But at the same time, the community has made it pretty clear that this direction isn't something that appeals to them. So this leaves the writer with two choices. 1. The story can reset itself to the earlier arcs because the formula was more appealing. Or 2. It can remove the progression of the entire first half which leads to neglecting the background and start off fresh once again. Can you seriously tell me that the series would benefit from either of these routes now that we have discussed the severe consequences of both of them? Most of the criticisms given to the story are just completely worthless to me because you can throw them at literally everything. There are too many characters, it's tough to keep track of them, there is no world building or background to the concepts, the main character doesn't get any development, all dumbass excuses that I have only one answer for. You were not paying attention. Firstly, the way To Your Eternity handled its characters is actually very creative. With separate arcs, they introduce only a few major characters that have stayed relevant at this point in the story. Secondly, I don't know if anyone noticed, but the audience literally experienced the entire background of the current arc up till chapter 115. Lastly, dude, it's a character driven story. You can't expect Fushi to become a saint in 40 chapters because that would kill any and all hope for his further development. Yes, To Your Eternity has changed, but I don't say this with the intention of playing as the devil's advocate. A change can always be appreciated, and I believe that with the modern day arc, Yoshitoki Oima is close to answering the most important question of the series. We saw Fushi slowly humanizing by bonding with his peers. We saw him live in isolation to protect everyone else above himself, which made him reluctant to forge new relationships. We also saw descendants of a terrible person find their own personality which made them protect Fushi's humanity above everything else. And now that Fushi has lived through all these past events, and now that his friends are walking on the path he has always wished for, 
Fushi needs to find his own path. What does eternity mean to Fushi? Is it the sacrifice of his own humanity that everyone wishes to protect for the sake of the world's survival? Or is it him continuing to live with his friends as long as he wishes and never coming to understanding the importance of death? So let's not pretend as if the author hasn't taken similar risks in the past by making each arc stand out in a unique way. Those were risks that did pay off when the story reached the halfway mark. I'm not saying that To Your Eternity will go down as the best story in the genre, but the drama and mystery that it continues to build upon could possibly lead to something very special.